What's going on YouTube family? I got a new video for you guys. So today we're going to be talking about the easiest way to get an auto trade line on your credit. All right, let's do a company called Swapalease. All right, Swapalease.com. They put in the link in the description of this video. Guys, make sure to also like and subscribe to this video so like your boy can keep bringing you guys some fresh bangers on a regular basis. All right, guys. So pretty much for those of you guys that don't know, what's an auto trade line? Pretty much an auto trade line is just like what it sounds like. It's a primary account, primary installment account on your credit profile, a primary auto loan, all right, showing on your credit profile. So that way you guys are able to build up your car here history, all right? Your car auto loan history. There's some of you guys that, you know, you ascribe to the whole cash is king mentality and you never finance a car before in your life, all right? And so now you find it hard to be able to walk into a dealership and get approved for a vehicle. Easiest way to get your foot in the door, to start building up some credit can be through using a method like this through Swapalease, all right? And I'm going to break that down for you guys. So what is, who is Swapalease, all right? Swapalease pretty much is just a middleman website out there. And what they do is Swapalease is going to connect people that want to transfer their leases. They want to get out of their leases and they're connecting those people with people that are well willing to take over your lease all right that's all it is kind of like a realtor connecting buyer connecting buyers and sellers same way all right man and why would somebody be wanting to get out of a lease all right it's possible two possible options either the person got too much car than they can afford so they can't afford the car payments anymore and instead of breaking the lease and facing whatever penalties they would just use a third party site like swap police try to get out of it all right and that's perfectly legal all right and then the second route is second reason why people would want to get out of a lease is maybe because they just got a bad deal on that lease all right they just got screwed on it and so they need to get out of it by any means necessary. But they would come to a site like Swapalease. All right, now here's the thing though, as far as the criteria, now you can't just walk up in there, you got a broken bus of credit and expect to be able to just take over any car you see on it. No, you gotta have at least this decent, at least the same or even better credit than the person that had the car before. All right, so the bank's gonna be looking at for, for that. So you need to have at least 680 plus. You gotta have decent credit to be able to qualify for this, all right? You just can't walk in there with a 480 and expecting to walk out with a, with a Rolls Royce, you know, some take over somebody's lease. No, all right, you still have to meet those certain criteria. You still have to have good credit, all right? Now, they might not need you to have several auto trade lines and all of that stuff. You're gonna have to have at least good credit, good, decent to good credit, be able to take over somebody's lease, all right? Now, for a rental company perspective, right? The reason why I love this play for you guys and the reason why I'm bringing it to your attention is, guys, when you go to this website, you would notice that a lot of, they have cars listed on here that only have a few more months left on the lease, all right? And that's the hack. So for those of you guys that wanna take advantage of this and use this as a way, an easy way to start establishing auto credit, this is the hack for you, all right? And not only that, there's also people that want to ascend, go up the ladder of essential, what I call the ladder of ascension. That's how you guys can work your way up from economy cars to luxury to exotic cars pretty quick. You want to collapse that time, swap a lease is the perfect vehicle for that, all right? Because all you have to do is say your last highest auto loan was for $20,000, right? You can come to swap a lease and try to see if you can get a car that's maybe $60,000 or $70,000, right? And, and just because it's on this platform, you'd be more, more inclined to bank, it'd be easier to uh, get that car than if you had to go to a dealership to try to get approved for a car like that, all right? So now the, the hack here is, Instead of having to go finance a car, and now you have to pay off that car and keep that car for the next 72 months or whatever, with Swap a Lease, you could go find that car. Say you want to hit, you want a hundred thousand dollar car, go find one on Swap a Lease, get one that maybe only has six months left on the lease. All right, if the payments and all the numbers look right, if you get in there and after you pay it off for six months, guess what? You now show a hundred thousand dollar car as being paid off on your credit in six months. All right, you're not getting credit for the entire term of the lease agreement, whatever the original owner of the car had for. Maybe if they leased a the car for for two years or three years, you're not getting, maybe maybe it's a three year lease, right? And then they've used it two years and six months. You're taking over the final six months. You would only get credit for the final six months. You're not getting credit for the entirety of the whole lease term, all right? But that's still good, all right? Especially if you're using this as a stepping stone. So if you want to climb that ladder of ascension, all you need is about six months. That's good. As long as it shows up in your credit, that's peachy. You paid off, all the banks need to see is that you finance and paid off a $100,000 car within six months and that's it. So once you get that on, the, on your, credit, your credit, the sky's the limit. You can start jumping into exotic is you start jumping into Lamborghinis and all of that stuff, all right? So that's the play. That's one play. Or for people that are just looking to, to fast track their way into getting auto loan history, this is another good way, right? If you don't want to have to be stuck with a car for, you know, 48 or six or whatever, 72 months, you could easily just finance a car for about, you know, six months, take over at least for six months, sorry, and then get out of it in, in six months minimum. And then that way you've established auto loan history, all right? And you've got that installment account on your credit profile. So that's the bar here, guys, all right? All right, guys. So like with everything, there are some things that you need to watch out for all right so i want you guys to come in there prepared and one thing too is you guys are going to notice on this website you're going to see a lot of postings that are look like they're from dealers all right let's just avoid all of those a lot of times are not good deals um pretty much these are dealers that are just trying to get rid of the excess inventory on you so avoid those ones you can tend you tend to know the ones that are by private individuals you know the numbers look a little bit more natural weird you know they're not like dealer numbers that you know 79.99 or whatever right you clearly tell you look at the language the description you can tell which ones are private individuals even from the pictures you know so go 
for those ones, all right? So that's one thing that you guys need to be looking out for. The next thing that you guys need to look out for is how many miles are you allowed to drive the car per month? That is very, very, very important, guys. All right, how many miles are allowed? Worst thing you wanna do is get into a lease where you're only being given 100 miles a month. You can't do nothing with that car. By the time you drive it home, <laughs> it's already, you're already over miles for that month. And you don't wanna get into a situation where at the end of the lease, you owe a lot more money. Uh, you owe a lot of money because you went over on the miles, all right? Try to find one that's giving you enough miles per month. That way you guys can use it. Personally, if you guys are intending to rent this out, you can make some money off the mile car, all right? So that's number one, all right? Number two is you guys wanna make sure to how many months are left in the lease, all right? Very important, all right? Make sure you know how many months are left in the lease. Very, very, very important. So that's number two, right? That's number two. But number three, you guys wanna make sure you know how many months are left are left on the lease. It's a car, if, if you're looking to hack your way up the ladder, then you don't want, so you don't need anything that's several years. The lower, the fewer the months, the better. I would say a good sweet spot is about six months, all right? That's enough time on your credit, right? The too little, two, three months, that's not enough history, all right? So at least minimum six months is what I would suggest. Six months to a year is perfect, all right? Otherwise, guys, hey, if it's a good car, if it's a good car, payments are good, walking in even with some equity, why not? And you guys, if you don't mind keeping a car for a year or two years, then so be it, do it, all right? Now, be also note the way it works is at the end of the lease term, you can either negotiate with the dealership and then buy the car outright, and then you guys come up with a payment plan for it, or you can just give it back. That's the way leases work, okay? So you're only paying for what you use for the, on the car. That's another thing too. So just know how many months are left on the lease, and then you guys can plan accordingly. All right, the next thing that you guys need to be mindful of is a down payment. Is there a down payment required on this vehicle? All right now, some of them are very predatory. They want a lot of money down. Stay, run away, all right, run away. Only time the down payment makes sense is if you guys run the numbers. You know the MSRP of the car, and then you see how much uh, typically what the monthly payments are. A rough estimate is gonna be about 1% of the value of the MSRP of the car, all right? That's just a rough estimate, all right? A gauge. So say a car, the MSRP of a car is $100,000, all right? 1% of that's gonna be $1,000. So you can tell your monthly payments are probably gonna be around $1,000, maybe a little more, you know, probably pushing it a little more, but typically one to 2%, but for leases around 1%. It's just a, a rule of thumb, right? Because now you're still gonna add taxes and a few other things that are just gonna bump it up a little bit more. All right, and that's when you start pushing to the true monthly payments of about 1,500, 1,600 typically is what you would pay for a $100,000 car, all right? So you guys wanna use 1% one, one as a gauge, and then now let's say they're still asking for, so let's say it's a $100,000 car, right? And then okay, 1% of that is about $1,000, all right? That's cool, that's, that's not bad at all, all right? Now if they're asking for a down payment, well, how much is a down payment, all right? Maybe if they're asking for $2,000 down, it might not necessarily always be a bad thing, all right? You divide the $2,000 by how many months are left on the lease, all right? So maybe if there's um, 12 months left on the lease, or 10 months left on the lease for easy math, that adds up to maybe $200 extra per month on your payments, all right? Then you spread out that $2,000 over 10 months, that's $200 extra a month, all right? So now your monthly payments are gonna be $1,200 a month, all right? So now you're still thinking about the whole MSRP and 1% of it, it's still not too far off. $1,200 is not bad to pay for a car, for a $100,000 car per month. That's actually not a bad deal, all right? So that's very doable. So I, I would say that, and then you, you factor in your taxes, right? Depending on whatever state you're in, you have to pay sales tax on the vehicle, you add that number, what's that number? And then divide it by the number of uh, months on, on the lease, and then now you come up with an, uh, you say, let's say the tax is gonna be an extra hundred, add an extra hundred dollars to your monthly payments. Now you have $1,300 a month. $1,300 is not bad for a hundred thousand dollar car, all right? So that's the only situation where I'd say, okay, yeah, you can go ahead and, and, and pay and pay a down payment on the car. But then there are clearly some cars on this website that are just predatory. The owners wanna make money off of you and they're asking for ridiculous down payments. Never pay that because most of the time that money is not the bank, the bank asking for that down payment. It's the owner of the car. They're just taxing you that, all right? They do not have to charge a down payment, all right? So you can either negotiate with them or try to see if they could just remove the down payment completely, all right? Now, on the flip side to that, actually owners out there that are so desperate to get out of these cars that they would actually give you what they call a cash incentive. So they'll literally paying you to take over this lease, all right? So you can also look for, search for those deals on this website and find the ones with the cash incentive. And they and then only thing I'll tell you to do is just make sure you guys have something in writing, all right? Or if you're working through swap lease, just make sure that, that you guys, that ends up being enforced, all right? Because when you finish the transaction, you have to finish the lease and then these guys have to send you that payment, all right? So just to make sure that they actually honor their promise and then pay you that cash incentive, all right? As they promised initially, okay? All right, guys, so the next point also is, once again, like I mentioned earlier, you have to know your, your numbers, all right? So make sure you know your numbers and you don't wanna be overpaying for that car, all right? Let's say, once again, going back to the $100,000 car example, right? Let's say the month, it's a $100,000 car, that's a typical, for whatever year that car is, let's say it's a 2023 Chevrolet Corvette, I'm just coming up with a, a car, right? And let's say the MSRP of that car is $100,000, and that's typically the MSRP everywhere, right? Well, you and then we all know, we know now that maybe a monthly payment for a car like that should be somewhere between $1,000 and maybe $1,800, somewhere in that range. You don't wanna go take a 
at least that's saying, hey, pay $29.99 for this, all right? Well, you gotta do the math. The payments, monthly payments seem excessive, excessively too high, and maybe it's not a good deal, all right? So you wanna check the MSRP of the car, and then you wanna factor in what the normal monthly payments should be for that car, and then that way you know if you're getting into a good deal or not, all right? So be very mindful of that also, guys, okay? All right, because at the end of the day, you wanna be making sure that the monthly payments are normal for a similar car, all right? You don't wanna be paying $1,000 a month for a Toyota Camry when you clearly know you can get a Toyota Camry for $200 or something dollars a month, all right? Off the lot, brand new, all right? So you don't wanna be doing something like that, all right? So make sure you guys run your numbers and you're making an informed decision. Now, guys, so once you found a car that you guys have settled on, pretty much you'd have to reach out to Swap Police. Swap Police will not get in contact with the bank that owns the lease, all right? Because all these cars, all these cars are actually being leased by an actual bank, all right? So they will contact, that leasing bank will now send you paperwork that you need to fill out and sign, all right? So you need to add some almost like car on your application, all right? You're gonna fill in all your personal information, they will do their credit checks, and if they approve you, and you sign, and pretty much you now negotiate how you, you're gonna take possession of the car, the actual seller, all right? So uh, maybe if you guys are in the same city, just meet up somewhere, or if he's in a different state, and you guys might have to negotiate some kind of transportation, or you flying out there to go pick up the car, all right? So at that point, it's just logistics of how you can get your get the car over to you. All right, so now before the haters in the comments now get, up, get at me and start saying, hey Mike, I didn't know I was gonna have to pay a fee or this, that, and the third. Guys, there are fees associated with this, all right? It's not free. Okay, Swap Police, for one, is gonna charge you their membership fee. I think it's cheap. It's somewhere between 50 to 100 bucks a year. All right, I forget the exact amount, but they will charge you something just for using their platform and for the service that they provide to you guys, all right? You're gonna have to pay sales taxes, all right? You can't escape that, all right? You're gonna have to perform, you do your registration or whatever on the vehicle to put the car into your own name, all right? That's standard and that's normal ever, all right? So those fees might be there. If you have to transport the car, if you're in a different state, going to have to pay for those expenses, all right? It's not gonna come free. And then also, depending on the bank, some banks might actually wanna run a credit application and, and charge a credit application fee, and you guys might have to pay that, all right? Depending on what it might be, a couple of hundred bucks, all right? So those are just some fees that you guys could keep your eyes out open eyes open for that you might expect to get hit with if you guys are going to go through this process, all right? Um, now, here's some other hack you guys could also keep in the back of your mind. Um, Whenever you guys are negotiating with these the sellers, ask them if they have any warranties that they paid for that they might be willing to transfer over to you, all right? If there's a manufacturer warranty left over, any third-party warranties that they paid, you guys can also have transfer all those warranties over to you guys so you can benefit from that, all right? That's another good hack that you guys should make sure you look out for. And so guys, I ain't gonna lie, I love Swap Police, all right? I think it's a great program out there. As long as you qualify, definitely take advantage of it. Excellent way for you guys to establish auto credit from history for people that also don't wanna be in a car for long terms. This is a perfect platform literally to use, all right? You guys can uh, just jump on here, get a car for a couple of months and, and get out of it, all right? So people that maybe don't wanna be in and locked into some long-term contract, this is a perfect uh, platform for you guys, all right? And then finally, like I mentioned earlier, I think this is one of the best ways for hacking your way up to the exotics, all right? I think you can, within, if you play your cards right, within a year or less, you guys could make that hop from 20, 30,000 to, to getting being qualified to get any car over 100K, all right? If you make the right moves on this website. So guys, I love it. Um, and you guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you guys have actually tried Swap Police, let us know your experiences, all right? If you have any data points, please also put them in the chat. I might have missed some things, all right? Definitely, so let's start some dialogue. Don't forget, guys, once again, please like and subscribe um, to the channel. Also, yeah, so that way I accept the notifications. That way you guys get notified whenever I put out new videos. I wanna thank you guys for tapping in once again, and I'll see you guys on the next one.